Calaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., where we're going to keyword stuff Taylor Swift anytime we get a chance, this is Ballot. That's right. Hashtag Taylor Swift. Hashtag Swifties. Hashtag Reputation. Hashtag Era's Tour. Hashtag Let's Hit This. Taylor Swift fans and social media sleuths are buzzing with speculation that the pop sensation has thrown her weight behind Vice President Kamala Harris for the 2024 U.S. election. This theory emerged from a seemingly innocuous Instagram post by Swift, who is dazzling Europe with her record-shattering Eras tour. Among the many photos from her Warsaw Poland shows, eagle-eyed fans spotted a silhouette in the seventh slide that looks suspiciously like Harris waving behind Swift on stage. One enthusiastic Twitter user couldn't contain their excitement, exclaiming, It really feels like it should be a bigger deal that Taylor Swift left a shadow of Kamala on her Instagram post, but I don't really see anyone talking about it. Another chimed in, Swift is low-key endorsing Kamala Harris on Instagram. No public statement yet, besides this pic. However, before you get too excited, it's worth noting that similar shadows appear in other photos from Swift's recent tour stops, suggesting it's more likely one of her background singers than the vice president. While Swift has yet to make an official endorsement for the 2024 election, her history suggests she might lean toward Harris and Walls. In 2020, she proudly backed Biden and Harris, telling V Magazine, I will proudly vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in this year's presidential election. Ladies and gentlemen, gather around, because once again... Donald Trump has blessed us with another gem from his ever-evolving nickname, Rolodex. Remember the good old days of Low Energy Jeb, Lion Ted, and Little Marco? Ah, the classics. But lately, it seems like Trump's insult game has hit a bit of a slump. Case in point, his recent masterpiece, Kamabla. Now, Kamabla is a nickname that first graced the world on Monday night in a pair of truth social posts. Trump didn't just stop there. He doubled tripled and quadrupled down on it. By midweek, Crazy Kamabla had made its grand entrance into seven more posts. And why is Kamala Harris crazy, you ask? Well, because she just is. Simple as that. Trump logic, folks. What's so crazy about her? Maybe she texted Trump 50 times in a row, asking he was hanging out with Kate. That's a callback to yesterday. Download Ballot wherever you get your podcasts. Try to keep up. But what on earth does Kamabla mean? Trump's surrogate, Doug Burgum, played dodgeball when asked about it on CNN. Even Trump's right-hand man, J.D. Vance, was of no help. According to Trump campaign spokesman Stephen Chung, Kamabla encapsulates all the hurt and misery the Biden-Harris administration has inflicted on every single American. Sure, Steve, sure. So let's dive into the theories, shall we? Theory 1. Kamabla is supposed to sound like Kamala is blah, or goes blah, blah, blah. Pronounced comma blah, it's as if Trump wants us to believe Harris is the human embodiment of dullness. But then, why not just spell it comma blah? Trump loves simplicity, right? Or does he? Theory 2. It's a mashup of Kamala and Obama. Because deep down, Trump wishes he were still up against his old nemesis, Barack Obama. He's even mixed up their names on more than one occasion. But why not Kobamala? That actually sounds kind of catchy. Theory 3 is even stupider. It's a mob reference. If you squint really hard and mispronounce Kamala just right, you might hear mob in the middle. But how exactly is this an insult? Also, Kamobla would have been a better spelling, no? Theory 4. It's a deliberate misspelling to show dominance. Remember Rob DeSantis? Trump might just be flexing his alpha muscles by mangling Harris's name. Theory 5. It's racist. With Trump's track record of racist nicknames, it's a possibility. Maybe he's trying to emphasize Harris's Indian heritage or make her name seem foreign and un-American. Theory 6. It's just a typo. The simplest explanation might be that Trump fat-fingered the keyboard and then ran with it to cover his tracks. Theory 7. He's really old, losing his memory, and thinks her name actually is Kamabla. It's been known to happen to candidates of certain age. Trump announced that he is set to sit down on Monday with one of his newer supporters, Tesla founder Elon Musk. On Monday night, I'll be doing a major interview with Elon Musk. Details to follow. Trump wrote on his Truth Social platform, which is interesting since Elon Musk owns Twitter. Musk has not yet commented on the interview on his platform, which only he calls X. 
Trump was banned from Twitter during the final days of his term in January 2021. His account was reinstated the following year once Musk took over the platform. Is J.D. Vance actually campaigning for Kamala Harris? Or maybe even Kamabla Harris? That was the mocking suggestion on social media on Tuesday, after Vance appeared on stage in Philadelphia before a gigantic slogan that read, Kamala Chaos. But, unfortunately for Vance, the people in the crowd behind him blocked the word chaos during certain parts of the vice presidential candidate's address. So, to people watching on TV and online, it just appeared as if Vance was talking below the word Kamala. It's almost like someone on Vance's team is secretly working for the Harris campaign. Imagine tuning in to see your candidate fire up the base, only to find him seemingly giving a heartfelt endorsement to his opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Kamala. Twitter was ablaze with reactions, with some users joking that Vance's speechwriter might have been replaced by a Harris operative. Others suggested that this might be the GOP's attempt at reverse psychology, make Harris look like the preferred candidate and hope it backfires. In a race where every word is scrutinized and every gaffe is magnified, this kind of slip-up is the last thing Vance needed. But hey, at least it made for some great late-night comedy fodder. Remember folks, in politics, it's not just about what you say, but also where you stand. And sometimes, the wrong backdrop can say it all. So let's break this next topic down. We've got Rafael Cruz who says, Call me Ted. No problem, Teddy boy. We've got Nimarada Haley chirping, Call me Nikki. Sure thing, Nikki Poo. And then we've got Kamala Harris, who has the audacity to say, Call me Kamala. And suddenly, it's like she's trying to pull off a heist at the identity bank. The Republicans' response? Why is Kamala Harris trying to hide her heritage? I'm sorry. What? Did I miss the memo where using your actual first name became a covert operation? So, here we are in the 2024 election cycle, where apparently we're not debating policies or qualifications, but whether using your given name is some sort of political strategy. It's like a game of guess who? But all the faces are politicians, and the only question is, is your candidate trying to hide their heritage by using their name? Let's check in on RFK with a story that we probably made up but you really can't tell anymore, can you? Apparently, our man Bobby had an epiphany while watching a Sons of Anarchy marathon and decided that the Kennedy image needed a bit more edge. So, he donned a leather jacket, custom made, of course, with the Kennedy crest embroidered on the back, and hit the open road. His first stop? A local diner, where he planned to host a town hall meeting. But this wasn't just any town hall. RFK Jr. decided to spice things up by combining politics with a cooking competition. The event, dubbed Bobby's BBQ and Ballot Bash, featured RFK Jr. flipping burgers and chatting about climate change between bites. Participants were encouraged to ask questions while enjoying a Kennedy-cooked meal. One lucky attendee even won a grill with Bobby apron, signed by the man himself. By the end of the night, Kennedy and the customers were singing karaoke together, with Bobby belting out a surprisingly heartfelt rendition of Born to be Wild. Did I make that up? No. I did not. But portions of today's program were made with the help of AI and Make Up an RFK Story is now part of this show's format. You're still not sure if that last story is true or not, are you?